Ciao, I'm Mariana Esposito. And I'm Patty Bongiovanni. Today we're here in the Piedmont and we're making classic cannelloni. It's beautiful. Ciao, I'm Mariana Esposito. Welcome to the Piedmont. This is a treasure. <laughs> okay, so we have them. See how easy this is? Isn't this beautiful? It's really a classic. Gorgeous. Looks like a painting. This is so dramatic. I keep telling you, I'm a one-pot girl. Mm, mm, mm. Beautiful. You're going to love it. Oh. I'm glad someone listens to me. I okay. do. Yeah. I All right. do. Isn't this gorgeous? Really different. I always say it has to sway like a grass skirt. You know why? What can I say? It's magnifico. Looks good already, doesn't it? It's so ethereal. I just love working with it. And guess what? That's hot. Phew! That's a workout. Ciao! <laughs> Funding for Ciao Italia was made possible by... Filippo Berrio knew that if he could please the world's most demanding palates, he could also win their hearts. Inspiring food lovers. Filippo Berrio, the first and last name in olive oil. Behind every bite, centuries of tradition. Authentic European foods earn their marks of distinction. What goes into King Arthur flour can't be measured in a single cup. Thousands of recipes, plus products, and other baking resources are at kingarthurflour.com. When you travel to the Piedmont region of Italy, it's like traveling back in time to misty mountain streams, deep valleys, and a way of life that puts food first, especially cheese. That's why I've come to the small town of Val Casotto, where Beppino Ocelli creates artisanal cheese and butter for discriminating shoppers like you and me. Today, Patty Bongiovanni and I are getting a special guided tour of the amazing cheese cellars that hide beneath this small village. And uh, as you see, the caves uh, is uh, natural when we need to create uh, humidity inside the cave. Mm -hmm. There is a mountain water yes. that uh, go down from the stone here. Yes. To create, uh, as you can see, the caves are, uh, the mm, condition of the caves are natural. Uh, when we, we need to create uh, humidity inside the cellar, uh, mountain water go down from this uh, stone. This is our original stone and we use mountain water as, as you can see on the floor. Yeah. It's uh, wet to create humidity inside the caves. Uh, in the caves uh, there are also natural molds which are really important for mm -hmm. the organolectic uh, development in the, uh, in the cheese. Mm -hmm. You see the different kind of molds the, the white, so also red molds are very important mm -hmm. for the development in taste of, uh, of the cheese. You see? Yes, now what kind of cheese is this? This is Cousier. This is Cousier, Cousier. Yes. okay. Yes, Cousier mm -hmm. is, uh, means what uh, there is, what is left. At the end, uh, during the day, we produce cheeses using cow, sheep, and goat milk. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, uh, according to the ancient tradition, we produce Cousier with the milk which is left. Left over. Yes. Okay. Cousier. And, and we have two kinds of uh, Cousier. Cousier with uh, sheep milk and Cousier with uh, goat milk. Okay. And uh, What do these tags mean? Uh, all uh, the cheeses with the text are uh, the cheeses which are uh, checked. All the analysis, uh, uh, tasting are done on this. On this, this uh, is controllato. Yes, yes exactly. Yes. Because we produce according to the tradition, but at the same time, we also check and grind the quality mm -hmm. for our consumers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, most of these cheeses are sold all over Italy and in the United States? Yes, they are also available mainly in uh, Europe, but also we have started to sell our products also in the uh, United States. Uh -huh. 
Okay. And uh, Beppino Celli is not only uh, uh, maturation, mm -hmm. but it is uh, very famous and popular for uh, his butter. Butter is uh, our I, first product. I love the butter. <laughs> <laughs> I love the butter. <laughs> yeah, in yeah. Uh, 1976 uh. with this uh, production, and it has also won many prizes all around the world as best butter of uh, the world. Really? And it is uh, really famous for the image of the cow yes. printed by hand on the, on the butter. butter. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And then he started to produce uh, because we are located in Langa, in the Langa area, mm -hmm. in the hills. Mm -hmm. uh, very famous for wine, mm -hmm. truffle, mm -hmm. a lot of very special products. Mm -hmm. And uh, he started to produce the typical uh, Langa cheese, Tuma, for example, Tuma della Paia, uh, but also Robiola, Robiola Mondovi. Uh, and he was also the first to use uh, the truffle in his cheese, to cheeses. combine truffle and cheese. cheese. Because, uh, you know, uh, we are, uh, uh, Langa era is very famous mm -hmm. for, uh, for truffles. Truffles, yes. Yes, and then we had the, the maturation, because uh, it's also the best place to mature our uh, cheeses. Mm -hmm. uh, now Felice is uh, choosing the best wheel for you. So he taps the cheese for air yes. to see if there's air in there. Spiega perché fai così. Sto battendo per vedere se il formaggio ha una pasta regolare e se se questo se questo formaggio ha una pasta regolare vuol dire che dentro non è non ha bolle d'aria ed è ottimo da gustare. E adesso lo lo sto tassellando. Oh my gosh. Oh, so very wonder. special. Oh, you yes. have the perfume and the juice flower of the mountain pastures. This is totally edible. Yes, yes totally absolutely, edible. absolutely. Uh, our, che mm, our cheeses receive any treatment. Mm -hmm. They are naturally produced and also mm -hmm. naturally matured in, mm -hmm. uh, in these caves. And in the cave you have natural molds, which are very important for the development of cheese, for the taste of the product. Mm -hmm. So you can have exactly the perfume of the herbs and the flowers that uh, have uh, eaten the cows in, this, uh, in the past. And, and depending on the time of year that he's testing this cheese, yes. it will smell differently. Yes, absolutely, oh. absolutely, yes. In fact, when uh, uh, we receive from the mountain uh, pastures the cheeses, for example, in, uh, uh, there is a big difference from spring, spring or summer, yeah. mm -hmm. maybe when they are on, on uh, high mountain pastures mm -hmm. at 2,000 meters, mm -hmm. you can count uh, a, a very wide range of different herbs and flowers. For example, we counted 190 different kind of herbs and flowers, so That's you can have all these particular perfume and Flavors flowers in yes in, yes in, in the milk wow. and then also in the cheese mm. uh, this, the cheese is not pasteur, is unpasteurized, it's a raw pasture. milk mm -hmm. so you can have uh, really the perfume and the aroma the of the uh, flavor yes oh my gosh. yes uh, used in our traditional recipe as for example gnocchi mm. al castellano yeah, because mm. 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 it's a good melting yes. cheese mm. yes. So it's named after where it is produced, like yes. a lot of cheeses are. Yes, yes. exactly. It's a PDO cheese, uh -huh. so it has a consortium, uh -huh. and uh, it is uh, produced according to a uh, traditional technique. So it obtains a, a crumbly texture. Uh -huh. mm. and Beautiful. And how do they get this pattern on the top? Of the this is uh, the cheese. sign, the mark of Castelmagno. Oh. So given from the consortio. Okay. Look at that. So this is a cheese that is <coughs> has a, like a DOP status. Yes, a DOP cheese. Uh, which exactly. has to be made in a certain place yes. by certain, uh, uh, following certain rules, and using certain kind of milk. Exactly. Yes. And there is also a big difference between Castelmagno mm -hmm. and Castelmagno del Peggio. Mm -hmm. Castelmagno del Peggio comes from mountain pastures mm -hmm. in the period May, October is a, a, a small production produced in uh, mountain pastures yes. at uh, uh, 2,000 meters mm -hmm. oh. altitude from May to October. Oh. So, oh, well, so yes, so very limited oh. uh, production, mm -hmm. few wheels, very, very special mm -hmm. with in, an incredible tech, uh, uh, flavor from uh, these special herbs and flowers from uh, mountain Beautiful. pastures. Deborah, thank you so much for giving us a cheese lesson. We need to go cook. We need to go eat some of this so. cheese. Arrivederci. Thank you. Grazie. Thank you so much. For <laughs>
excursion about I, cheese. Oh, I love cannelloni. So, why don't we make a cannelloni that has cheese and a meat filling mm. and spinach, and I'll show you how to do it. You've done this before? Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. You you will show me I how to do this. I will lead you through this. Great. So, we want to start with a couple eggs, and these are really, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. I love the color of the eggs in Italy, and we need one yolk, so can you separate that Dude. one? Yeah. So, there's two. Yep, the best way to separate an mm -hmm. egg is with an well, egg separator. Mm -hmm. Excellent. There you go. All Thank right, you. so one yolk, which we're going to put right there. There we go. Perfect. So we can get that, move that out of the way. So we should tell everybody that uh, we're best pals now, aren't we? We are. Yeah. We've, we've been cooking, we've been eating. <laughs> I've been cooking in the castle for a week, so I, I really feel like I belong now. Look at that color. I know, it's oh, gorgeous. gorgeous. So, how could you not want to? Always cook at home if you have ingredients like this. Oh my gosh. So why don't you give this a little salt for me, okay? okay. Put a little salt in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. And we want to flavor this with a little bit of fresh nutmeg, so you put that in. All of it? Or yeah, all, 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 all of it. All of it. All right. Yeah, get that a nice flavor. You and go. you can buy nutmeg whole like that, and then Close. you get a, get a little grinder and mm -hmm. grind it up. Grind them up. All right, so a little melted butter, about two tablespoons goes in. Is that what we have here? Yeah, we have two tablespoons of melted butter. And this, actually, this recipe from the Piedmont is French in origin mm. because the legend goes that there was a count by the name of Bavarot. The Count Bavaro is the one who was supposed to have invented this particular recipe when right? he came to the Piedmont. So we need some milk, about uh, one and three quarter cups or one and a half cups. Right. Let's start with one and a half. We might need more. Put it all in. Okay. So we whisk all Just of, all at once. Yeah, put it all in. Because we're making a pancake batter, really. This is what this is. So now I'm going to have you just gradually get that in for me. That's about one and a half cups of flour, but not, don't put it all in at once. A little bit at a time. This is why you need two people to make cannelloni. No, it's more one fun. to whisk. More fun Yeah, just way. tap the bowl there to get it. There we go. And I think that this is a fabulous first course. It's a wonderful there first course. And we're going to make a filling for this with some veal and some rosemary some garlic, oh, beautiful. spinach. So this is perfect. You see, it's very nice and fluid. So it's sort of ropey. Yeah, ropey. Do that. Great. So we're ready. We're ready to go. Can I turn and, on the pan? Uh, yes, turn yes. on the pan. All right. And you come with me because I'm going to show you how to make the cannelloni too. <laughs> so you need a small pan like this, about inch, eight inches, six mm -hmm. to eight inches, depending on how big you want your cannelloni to be, and it's non-stick. That helps you mm -hmm. when you're doing this. So why don't we put mm -hmm. a, a little bit of uh, olive oil. Bit. Yeah, a little extra virgin olive oil. Okay, that's enough. Just mm -hmm. to grease the base of the pan. And then as you're making these, you may have to go back and add a little olive oil here or there if you see that it, the pan is sticking mm -hmm. a little bit. So you get that going. And then you want to take a small scoop of this. And actually, you could make this batter ahead of time, put it in the refrigerator, mm -hmm. and you could do it the next day if you wanted to. Oh, so great. we're going to take, oh, a small ladle full. Put it right there, and then you want to swirl it. Okay? Swirl oh, it just it. starts cooking right It just away. starts cooking. Just swirl it around the pan until you've got something that looks like a circle. And then you leave it here, and then you let it set up. So that takes, you'll know you can take it out when you can touch it on top with your finger, and it isn't, you know, it's not it's loose. Not wet. It's not sticky. And also by looking at the color, you see what's happening oh, there? Oh, look at that. As it's starting to change color, you know that it's getting huh. a little solid there, where here it's rather wet. So you want to be careful there. And then as it cooks... Don't walk away. No, no. You can just go around the edge. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to come out because you're using a nonstick pan. That's right. why you should use a nonstick pan. And then while it's cooking, you have ready some either wax paper, and you cut several sheets like this. You can, out of this recipe, you're probably going to make about 8 to 12 or so. And then it's easy. Once it's ready, you just take it and flip it right out. See? Oh. Just like that. Oh, so you don't have to worry about flipping it in no. the pan. Oh, well, that's, that's no, wonderful. No, no, no. So now I'll make one more, and then you make one. Okay? So again, you're taking just about that much. Put it in the pan. Work quickly. Swirl, swirl, swirl. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't it nice? It's mm -hmm. a lot of wrist 
action. I could probably pay, play baseball, but anyway. <laughs> okay, so, you know, that's, that's all to it. And the other wonderful thing about this is if you're thinking ahead for a party, this is a great first course. Do I do this? Yes. Sorry, You can make me. these, the shells, ahead of time, and you can freeze them. Freeze oh, them unfilled, that. just like that. Now I'm going to let you take that one out. You see how it's starting yep. to set up beautifully. And when you freeze them, Marianne, do you wrap leave, them in what, more wax paper? Or I leave how them, do you do I that? leave them stacked between the papers just like that, uh -huh. and then I put them on a big sheet of aluminum foil. Wrap them up, I write on the front, Cannelloni made by Marianne, put them in the freezer, <laughs> and everything is... Then you just have to make the filling, see? Oh, you can be a little bit more aggressive than that. I can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, beautiful. Oh, there we go. See? Mm -hmm. Super easy. All right. Wonderful. It's, I don't want to hit you with my elbow. Oh, yeah. That's okay. <laughs> you know, it's your there kitchen. There you go. Okay, so now. So do you think that's enough? I sure do. And now just flip. There Woo! you go. All there right. We, <laughs> we have to make about eight more of these. So let's continue on. Oh, they're beautiful. Okay. And after we do this, we've got to make filling. Here we go. Get it in there. Okay. Now pick it up. Swirl. All the way around. That's it. To the words to that, Marianne. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you gotta put it back on the flame. Here we have about three quarters of a pound of veal. Veal. Or you could use pork or beef if you wanted to, mm -hmm. but veal is more traditional. And all I did was cook it in a little olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, with some fresh rosemary mm -hmm. and garlic. Oh, it while smells. While you were out in the garden. It smells delicious. Doesn't it smell good? Mm -hmm. you, know, you could eat that just the way it is. Oh, yeah. So now we're going to give it a little salt and a little pepper. And would you mind cracking that egg into here for oh, me? Sure thing. So I want an egg to help bind this all together. That's good. I'm going to add that. And then for added moisture, I like to use some prosciutto, prosciutto di San Daniele, mm -hmm. which you know yep. is wonderful. And it's uh, just a wonderful flavor, raw cured ham from the Friuli Venezia mm -hmm. Giulia region. So delicious. So delicious. And you can use it in recipes. So here we're going to use it diced up. I'd say two, two slices, two thin slices. Mm -hmm. And that goes in. And then because... We were with cheese all day long. <laughs> I thought we'd add some of that Cousset cheese. Oh, that's which delicious. Which is this cheese that we got. Mm. And I have it here grated up. So about two tablespoons. Oh, it, it almost looks like the Parmesan, doesn't it? It yeah, grates up grating nicely. Yeah, cheese, yeah. So we put that in. And so now you can start to see that this is going to be a really tasty filling. And then the last thing we want is some spinach. You need about a cup. This is more than we need, but... Well squeezed spinach, you can either use frozen mm -hmm. that you've defrosted and squeezed really well, or you could buy fresh that you just steam. Don't boil it because spinach is 99% water to begin with, so why would you want to boil it? Steaming it is better. So we add that, and that looks good, huh? Oh, it's beautiful. So, Patty, I know that you have a very good wine friend here in the Piedmont, and of we course, do. Piedmont so famous for so many wines, so mm. I want to add a little wine to this. We, we have a, the Cascina Bongiovanni's uh, Dolcetto Diano d'Alba, which is okay. just a lovely, light, red, beautiful mm -hmm. wine. All right, so, so just, just two tablespoons Two tablespoons? So. Yeah. Will you say when? Yeah, go ahead. Is that good? Yeah, a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, hefty two go. tablespoons. So we mix good that job. around to get, look at the color. Oh my gosh, look at that, it's beautiful. Beautiful. And now we have to let this kind of just meld all together. And while we do that, while that's happening, we're going to make the cream sauce, which we know is a salsa de chabella. Mm. Okay, so we're going to yep. do that. So let's just let this sit around. And you and I, let's get the stuff out to make the sauce. Now we're going to make a roux. We're going to make a uh, salsa de chabella. So we have to melt some butter. Mm -hmm. So we have a stick of... Good unsalted butter. All butter in Italy, as we know, is unsalted, right? At home, should you still use unsalted butter? I do for everything because it's fresher. Okay. And if you do use unsalted butter in your cooking, then you have to adjust the recipe for salt. So you're going to have mm. to add more, so add a more, more salt. So now we make a paste okay, with the butter. We don't want it to brown. And then when we have a paste like this, we add a little salt. So you want to put right that salt in? Yeah. All of it? Yep, put it all in. Okay, and now we've got hot milk. So why don't you start pouring that in there? There we go. Slowly, slowly, slowly. 
Why is it hot, Marianne? Because so, you don't want to bring down the temperature of the butter in the pan. Uh, so you start with hot. Keep going a little bit faster than that. Okay, keep going a little bit faster. And if you find that this looks lumpy to you, don't worry. It's all going to straighten out in the end. Okay. So just get it all on. Just don't get it on me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. That all was that, Yeah, that was okay. about four cups. There we go. Of milk. And we're using whole milk. But you could also use low-fat milk if mm -hmm. you wanted to. If so want it doesn't matter. Yes, and if you wanted to make it even richer, you could use light cream, but there's no need to do that. No. So now we just whisk until this thickens up. It's going to take, oh, about maybe three or four minutes to do. Would you like to try? Sure. Keep the heat on medium so it doesn't burn, and you just keep whisking so as not to have anything sticking to the bottom of the pan. Okay. If you find that you feel some stickiness at the bottom of the pan, it means that the heat is up too high, so ah, you want to lower it. Okay? Because you don't want any little brown bits in no. there. And then you can add some nutmeg to this, a no. little nutmeg that's really in the northern Italian tradition. If you don't like nutmeg, you can just leave it out. So, Patty, here we have the sauce, and you did a great job. See it's how beautiful, beautiful it is? Mm. You can make this ahead, but I would suggest that you put a piece of buttered wax paper right on top of the sauce so mm. as not to make a, a, a like skin a film on, on the, film top. On the mm -hmm. top. So we are going to put a bit of this into our meat mixture. Ah. And that helps to keep it all together inside of the crust. Yeah, this is going to help bind this all together. All right, so now we can mix this together. And once we've got this, why don't you brush that pan with a little olive oil? A little extra over here. You need a little olive oil to do. And that looks good. And now we're ready to fill those cannelloni shells. Okay. Oh, I okay. smell the wine with the heat of the bechamel. Yeah. Oh, that smells delicious. And so let me show you how this goes together. Are you watching this? I am. About a tablespoon of this mixture first. And put it down. Ooh, I hear the bells of the church. The bells. So that's what's go. so beautiful about being in Italy. I know. Yeah. It, okay. It's wonderful. All and over. then you take and you roll this up. See? Just like that. And you form... The cannelloni. You put it in the dish. I'll do one more and then you're going to do the rest. Okay. So here are our very nice looking shells. You want about two hefty tablespoons of this mixture. Oh, these are going to be delicious. I'm so excited. This is a really wonderful first course. Filling. Very first fill. It's, a, it's very filling as a first course. You could probably have it as a, a meal if you wanted as to a as well. Okay. It was just a nice salad or nice something. Nice salad. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then now your, your oven is on at 350 degrees to bake these. And how long do these bake? This is going to take about 20, 25 minutes. You're going to cover them first with foil. Mm -hmm. And then last five minutes, I would take the cover off just so you can, it, the cream sauce will brown a little bit just over the top. Just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. We want to there you go. spread a little of this sauce. And I'm going to need one of your spreaders. You know. One of my spreaders. You want to really get that sauce. You mean, oh, like the spreader we were using for the mm -hmm. crepes? Just take a knife or a spoon, and you just want to spread, see? Spread it evenly mm. over. Look at how beautiful that spreads. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm -mm. You want to really cover them so that they, More? You know, they don't dry out in the oven. So wherever you see a little hole or so, you just put a little extra sauce on them. Whew. Oh, gosh. Oh, they're gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Here, That's enough. A little bit on the corner. Then we want here. a little bit of that Cousset cheese that we uh, had today. Grate it up. Grate it up over the top, just like that. Let's put it all out. It's about a quarter of a cup. We're going to cover this with foil. Did you put the oven on? Yes, I did. Okay. Let's move this out of the way. Mm -hmm. Here's our foil. Cover it tightly. And if you open the oven door, I'll get this in. Okay. 25 minutes later, you are eating like the count. Oh, Marianne. Beautiful. 
What a fantastic day we had. Beautiful, beautiful dolcetto from mm. Cascina Bon Giovanni for you. Patty, the view, mm. the wine, the cheese, and the cannelloni, which are so Piemontese that we made today. Remember, oh. elegant. We had those crepe shells that we made, the cannelloni shells, and then Simple. we filled it with oh. the veal and the wine beautiful. and the egg and the cheese, rolled it up baked it in the oven, and it's smelling beautiful. Oh, my mouth is watering. Wonderful first course, and I think Gorgeous. we should eat that. So, I think so. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you, Marianne, for coming. Chin, for chin. Everything. Chin, chin. And until I see you in Ella Cucina again, I'm Marianne Esposito. And I'm Patty Bongiovanni. Ciao. Ciao. Marianne shares the secrets of three generations of Italian cooks with Ciao Italia Family Classics. Filled with over 200 authentic recipes from Mary Ann, her mother, and grandmothers, this fully illustrated cookbook is available wherever books are sold and on the web. Learn more about the culture and cuisine of Italy's many regions and prepare many of their unique recipes by visiting Mary Ann at her website, ciaoitalia.com. Funding for Ciao Italia was made possible by... Filippo Berrio knew that if he could please the world's most demanding palates, he could also win their hearts. Inspiring food lovers. Filippo Berrio, the first and last name in olive oil. Behind every bite, centuries of tradition. Authentic European foods earn their marks of distinction. What goes into King Arthur flour can't be measured in a single cup. Thousands of recipes, plus products, and other baking resources are at kingarthurflour.com.